A few floors down the school, the literature club's members are conducting their respective activities, each reading their preferred genre in silence. Monica, the club's president, briefly puts down her book to glance at the clock. She looks on at the other two members with a concerned look. Hey, any idea where Adrian and Yuri went off to? Siri puts down her book. We thought they said they were just going to get a snack. <laughs> yeah, right, they're going to get a snack. The pink-haired girl says, attempting to hold in her laughter. Her expression is part or us partially obscured by the manga she has in hand. Come on, you guys know how those two really are with each other. I can't say I really know the details of their relationship. It's not really my business to anyways. Well, Adrian tells me a lot. I'm surprised you're worried this time. It's not like you've cared before, but or when they've wandered off for like half the club. I'm just wondering where they are, that's all, Natsuki. You don't think they've ditched us, do you? No, they left their stuff here. Honestly, I've been meaning to talk to Adrian about disappearing with Yuri, especially since he spent so much time here and hasn't committed to joining us. Adrian's not really a club person, and Yuri's the only person who can probably convince him to join. How do you know him so well? He doesn't really open up to me. I just know him. Well, if you know him, then where did he take Yuri? Beats me. The door behind them suddenly bursts open. The three girls turn around to see a horrific sight. Adrian and Yuri carrying along Shiro, who's a complete mess. I think that answers your question, Monica. Natsuki says as she quickly stands up and puts her manga aside. Mind helping me here? Monica quickly walks over to the teacher's chair and rolls it out for Shiro as Yuri and Adrian help him sit down. Siori, bring me my bag, please. Right! Siori trots over to Adrian's bag at the back of the room and brings it to him. Thanks. Natsuki, grab an ice pack. From where, exactly? I don't know, just find something cold. Adrian quickly unzips his bag and pulls out a first aid kit. Monica winds her eyes upon seeing it. Since when are you an EMT? I'm not. Then why do you- That's not important right now. Adrian says as he opens up the kit and takes out a few pieces of ga er, gauze and applies it to Shiro's mouth. Just hold it. Shiro wordlessly holds the gauze to his lips. Thankfully, he's not in worse shape, just some bruises and cuts to the face. I do think he busted his jaw a bit. Once Natsuki comes back with some ice packs, we should be good. Adrian, what happened? Adrian gives Monica a deadpan expression. Monica then takes one look at Shiro before closing her eyes and she's sighing. Oh my gosh. Yeah, fortunately I stopped him from doing anything worse. Anything else hurt, big guy? Thumbs up or down? Shiro meekly raises his thumb and points to his knee. Gotcha. Well, we'll wait for Natsuki to come back with an ice pack for you. Just sit still for right now. Yuri, please stay with him. Okay. Yuri holds onto Shiro's hand as he slowly removes the gauze, revealing it to be covered in blood. Just keep it on there. Trust me, it should stop soon. Shiro complies with Yuri's instructions as tear, or a tear running down his cheek. Hey, it'll be okay. Yuri says as she gently takes Shiro's hand in hers. Monica pulls Adrian to the side and out of earshot. We have to report this. Adrian scoffs. You're kidding, right? I'm serious. If Kai is starting to assault people, that can't stand. Adrian sighs. They're not going to do anything. It Rankin's either blind or doesn't care, much less President Gray. Hate to say it, but there's plenty of people who ended up worse for trying to take on Kai. Somehow he manages to avoid serious punishment each time. You forget what happened to Nick? Dude was out for a month because that gremlin threw him down the stairs when he finally tried standing up for himself. Kai insisted he didn't do anything, and because there was no camera footage or witnesses, they believed him for some reason. Trust me, with some of the other injuries that Kai and his people inflicted on others, he got off pretty easy. A busted up jaw isn't the worst thing in the world. Adrian, I'm serious. We've got to do something. Besides, I don't want Shiro staying here. She says, straining to keep her voice a whisper. For now, just let the poor guy recover until he's good to make his way home. I doubt he's in the mood to try anything with you. Monica sighs. Fine, just for today. Adrian looks at Monica with a puzzled look. What, do you think I'm suggesting letting him stay here full time? I mean, it's your club, you can do what you want. I just don't want him getting any ideas. Then talk to him, why are you telling me? I, I don't feel comfortable approaching him, not alone. Adrian groans. If you want me there, fine. For now, just let me tend to him. Okay. The door opens back up and Natsuki comes in with a couple of ice packs. 
Excuse me. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, they, they had ice packs as one word before, and now it's two words. Yeah, I'm pretty sure either is fine, just be consistent. Just be consistent. Adrian walks past Monica and towards Shiro as Sayori walks up to Monica. Is he going to be okay? Yeah. I... God damn it. He's in good hands. Yeah, I'm sure he will. After a solid ten minutes, the bleeding in Shiro's mouth stops and he finally no longer feels dizzy. The literature club has also, or had also gotten another chair for Shiro so that he could support his injured knee. They had applied the ice packs to his knee and to one to his cheek. Finally, Shiro was able to talk. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, don't mention it. I just don't understand why you were trying to fight Kai. This assholes dragged me to the empty classroom on the, or on the fourth floor, and Kai just spent the entire time relegating my, the past. Oh, relitigating is what it says. Wait, wait, no, it says relegitating. I'm not sure what, what this word's supposed to be. Really, re, I think they wanted to say relitigating. Yeah, they got the T and the G backwards. Relitigating. Yeah. <sighs> he was asking me about my friend Charlotte before fighting me. Yeah, I had him on the ropes until he got the call in for backup. A little proud of myself, honestly. Monica, Adrian, and Sayori exchange a nervous look at one another. Well, be thankful it wasn't for us, Shiro. How did you end up in that situation? Like I said, I was dragged there. Mr. Zewinsky could have stopped it, but Victor literally bribed him right in front of my face. As if I needed another reason to dislike Zewinsky. I have him for one of my classes. This is awful. Yeah, no kidding. If he did this to me, I'm concerned for Charlotte's safety. I gotta warn... Right now, you can't go anywhere. If you're worried about Charlotte, I'd just call her. I don't know how the hell I'm going to explain this to her. She's going to have a heart attack when she hears what happens. Yeah, she would. I don't know. Just wait until tomorrow. You know how Charlotte is, Monica. It's not going to make her worry less. I know. Monica says, clutching her head. I've got a headache. I'm going to be right back. Monica walks out of earshot towards her bag, searching for her aspirin. Earshot can actually be one word. She feels a sudden tap on her shoulder. She looks behind her to see Natsuki. Oh, Natsuki, what's up? Hey, you got a second? For the moment. So, uh, this situation has got me thinking about something. Okay. You know how you've been wanting to recruit members for the club in advance of the festival? Make it seem like we're this big-time club? Right. Well, what if we asked Shiro to join? I mean, with the anime club gone. No. No way am I allowing Shiro to be a member of our club. Look, I get this is all because of your past with him. I get what he put you through. But I know him too. He's not a bad guy at heart. He means well. Even if he doesn't always do well. What I'm asking is, give him another chance. He worked hard for the anime club, and I know he did a lot of things for the science club last year too. If you can keep him busy, he won't be in your hair all the time. Besides, I don't think he's interested in you anymore. I don't know. Monica says, taking a worried look at Shiro before looking back at Natsuki. Besides, your reputation alone would probably protect him from Kai. Kai wouldn't dare to mess with you. Monica sighs as she takes an aspirin pill and takes a sip of her bottle. Truthfully, it's not Kai I'm worried about, it's Valerie. If she finds out that someone like Shiro's hanging around in my club, it'll embolden her to amp up her feud against me. I think Valerie is too busy terrorizing her club members to worry about what you're doing. Monica nervously laughs. Oh, you'd be surprised. Ever since I left the bait club, she's branded me a traitor and has vowed to block me in anything constructive I do around the school. She's single-handedly blocked every resolution I've proposed in our student study meetings. Not to mention, Valerie has Jeremy's ear. So do you. He likes you well enough. You told me how happy he was when you were starting your club. Yeah, but if it comes down to me or her, he's choosing her, no question. Look, whatever Valerie Radcliffe does to you, I'm sure you can handle it. Besides, she has no way of knowing what happens in our club. Just think about it, okay? If Shiro needs a place to hang out after school for a bit because he's afraid of getting harassed, shouldn't we open our doors for him? You're sure he won't cause problems? I'm pretty sure. Like I said, he's not half bad. Sure, he can be annoying, cringy, and too open, but... If he's still the person that I knew back in the anime club, 
He's a good guy, no question. Monica stares back at Natsuki for a full minute before laying out a sigh. Okay. I'm willing to provide him sanctuary for now, and I'll reserve judgment on inviting him to join until later. Thank you, Monica. No problem, I just hope I don't regret this. Monica exchanges a weak smile with Natsuki before walking back to Shiro. Adrian looks to Monica, who waves her hand, signaling him to go away. He nods and heads to the back of the room where Yuri is. Monica pulls up a chair and sits across from Shiro. Shiro's heart begins pounding against his bruised ribs. What could she want? Is she going to yell at me? Oh, it's his, you know. And certain thoughts begin to form as he envisions the worst case scenario. The two stare at each other, each of them nervous to break the ice. Finally, Shiro decides to go first. Uh, thanks for letting me crash here. I'll try not to make it a habit. Monica nervously laughs. It's no problem. You were hurt bad and well. We were clearly the only ones willing to help you. It means a lot, really. Lately, everyone's been abandoning me. I'm sure you heard about the anime club. And I know you know what's going on with Charlotte, too. Yeah, I spoke with her about it. Another moment of silence falls over them before Monica ends it by letting out a sigh. Shiro, I know you and I have a complicated past, but you don't deserve this. The school shouldn't let something like this slide. So, I'm willing to let this be your sanctuary if you feel safe enough here. I won't look for you here. Really? Jeez, thanks, Mon- I only ask that you don't speak of this to anyone. I mean that, whether you deserve it or not, your reputation does have a lot of negative weight, and I'm not blind to the reality of it. Kai might not be coming to bang on my door, but I know others who might. For my sake, please be discreet. You can count on me. I'm glad to hear that. The two exchange a brief glance at each other before Monica stands up to walk away. However, Shiro calls out to her. Monica? Hmm? Hang on a second, please. Monica slowly sits back down. There's something I gotta tell you. Monica cringes. No, I'm not in love with you. I'm, I'm past that. I mean it. But I did want to apologize for everything I put you through last year. I at least owe you that. I know we went over this before, but I, I wanted to do this without a metaphorical gun to my head. Not to say what I said to you back then wasn't honest or I didn't mean any of it, but I get the feeling that you never really believed me. And, well, I wouldn't blame you. I get that I did a lot of weird things that I shouldn't have done. The weird comments, stalking you, the gifts, and, well, everything else. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry for everything. I swear to you that I didn't write that fanfiction. I promise you that wasn't me, and I'm sorry for everything that you put, or that put you through. I was an idiot back then, and I just wanted to let you know how truly sorry I am. I understand if we're past the point of no return, but maybe we can try to be cool with each other one more time? There's a long moment of silence between Monica and Shiro. He helplessly stares at Monica as she wraps herself in her arms, painfully trying to hold back tears. She lets out a shaky breath. I... I appreciate you trying to make things right, Shiro. For what it's worth, I never doubted the sincerity of your apology. It's just... I still have a hard time getting over what happened. Whether you meant to or not, you put me through a lot. Directly and indirectly. I still find the circumstances of the whole situation to be shady, to say the least. But my therapist once told me that forgiveness is a long and hard road with lots of tolls. We should be willing to forgive those who are sincere. If you're truly being sincere, I'm willing to give you another chance. But you have to earn my trust back. Oh, of course. How can I do that? That'll come in time. Like I said, it's a long and hard road, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of opportunities. Monica says with a pained smile. For now, just take care of yourself, and don't mention to anyone outside the club that I'm letting you hang around here. Can Charlotte know? Monica pauses. I'll tell her myself. She's welcome to drop by here, but I know she has her own club to attend to. Yeah. Well, I have something I need to do, so I'll see you around. Yeah, see you around. Monica briefly smiles before standing up and walking over to the computer on the other side of the room. Shiro leans back as he reapplies the ice pack in his hand to his cheek, letting out a soft moan. Well, I think that went better than expected. Natsuki says as she approaches Shiro. How much of that did you hear? He says muffledly. Just enough. She says as she sits down in the seat across from Shiro. Still the eavesdropping type, I see. Hey, I don't do it on purpose. It's not my fault you talk so loudly. Eh, fair enough, Shiro says as he removes the ice pack. So, 
So, you look better. Natsuki lets out a giggle. <laughs> yeah, I've been eating better. And I've got my diet under control now. Er, er, now I'm on constant, er, now I'm not constantly eating fast food and eating an anxiety with my smoking habits. Anxiety. Smoking? Is this club meetings? Well, that's good. Yeah, life's been okay for the most part. <laughs> I see you've been better. Yeah. It's been a rough couple of weeks. Honestly, I'm ready for the semester to be over. <laughs> it just started! Oh, God. I just hope the rest of the semester isn't as bad as these first couple of weeks have been. Well, just eyes on winter break, I guess. Yeah. Natsuki and Shiro stare at each other in silence, both unsure of what to say next. Natsuki then guiltedly looks at the floor. So, uh... I heard what happened to the anime club. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah... I know I'm not one to talk, and I know I kind of put you guys in that situation, but... I'm sorry, but you did. If you were still there, this probably wouldn't be happening right now. None of this. Shiro says as he gestures around the room. Yeah, I get that. But I just couldn't stand being around Kayla anymore. I'm sorry. She chokes her the last part out. There, I said it. I'm not saying it again. Shiro lets out a chuckle. You haven't changed one bit, have you? I'm still the same person I've always been, Shiro. I'm not the one who changed. Neither did Kayla. Or, wait, neither did Kayla. Well, I guess I got to know just enough about her. Natsuki lets out a groan. I never understood why you guys couldn't get along for the sake of the club. Tracy was the only one who could keep you two in line. I feel like this is more of a statement. This is like a question, not a statement. Ah, gotta, gotta fix that. Yeah. Tracy was the only one who could keep you two in line. Yeah, but when she was on the way out and it was painfully obvious that Kayla was next in line, I wasn't going to stick around. Besides, she probably would have gotten rid of me. Honestly, if you ran for president, I probably would have stuck it out for another semester at least. I didn't care to be club president. I was more than happy with secretary. Heh, <laughs> for a hard worker, you sure went for the easiest job. I like to work smarter, not harder. The two share a laugh together. But seriously, what was your issue with Kayla? I always got along with her great. We just didn't mix, Shiro. That's just what it comes down to. Different tastes in anime, different tastes in manga, different music tastes. I can make you a whole list. And Kayla can be just so judgmental at times. In her defense, so are you. Yeah, but she never cared to try out any of my tastes or interests. It's always, what am I for? Lol. Give me some credit here. I tried to indulge her in her interests for as long as I could, but she never cared for mine. I feel like she never gave me a chance. And her goth look was just... Ew. Not to mention she was a, a total slut with Ruby. They probably had fucked every single guy in our grade last at least twice and constantly bragged about it in their little corner. It was just gross how they put themselves out there. It feels disrespectful to use your body like that. Well, they fucked everyone except me. Shiro lets out a dry laugh. Natsuki's shock quickly gives way to disgust. Shiro, sensing he had made a mistake of some kind, quickly course corrects. <laughs> Sorry, please continue. Right. Well, I know I'm exaggerating, but... Yeah, we just didn't reciprocate in the way I thought we would have. I could at least tolerate being in the same room as Ruby. She usually didn't make me feel like punching a hole in the wall. She only got on my nerves when she would cling to Kayla's side in every situation. But I could endure it because Tracy made me feel welcomed and respected enough. Around her and the rest of those old-timers, I didn't have too many problems with Kayla. But when she left, I knew Kayla and I were just going to keep fighting until one of us left. And we both know if Kayla left, Ruby would leave too. So I swallowed my pride for a minute and decided to bite the bullet and leave. That way, I at least gave you guys a chance to continue on rather than just you and me struggling to find two people. I wouldn't have minded it too much. I mean, it would have sucked to have lost Kayla and Ruby, but it sucked losing you, too. I missed the food you'd bring in for our club meeting. I missed playing Attack on Titan with you. It just felt like we lost a family member, you know? Well, it means a lot that you feel that way about me, Shiro. You weren't too bad to hang around with, either, and I missed talking about that her visual novels with you. Huh, maybe those days can return again here soon. She says as she glances at Monica. I don't think Monica would let me join your club if that's what you're getting at. She's letting me use this as a sanctuary until I can get back on my feet, at least. Well, to be honest, that's how I kind of started out here, too. I needed a place to store my manga collection, and Monica was kind enough to offer. 
Of course, it was a bit of a process to get us to know and respect each other, but that's a side story. Well, anyways, if I could do it, so can you. Natsuki says, smiling at Shiro. I appreciate the encouragement. Natsuki peers over her shoulder at the back of the room, towards the windowsill in front of the closet, and then rolls her eyes. Ugh, those two lovebirds. What? What's going on? Oh, just our close couple. Hmm. Yeah, I think before this scene continues any longer, since I'm not sure how much further it has to go, I am going to call it here for this session. We are one part of another episode into the investigator arc, and it's, things are heating up quite a bit, apparently. But uh, we'll just see where this has to go. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you next time with more branching paths. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.